My name is Lisa Gorin, and I'm a watercolor artist out of Boston. And I'm a guest artist at the Dedham Open Studio, so that they were very kind to have me here. I do watercolors, mostly of polar and frozen landscapes. So these are either of the far north, far south, or the winter in Boston over here. That's last year's polar vortex. Um, so my season is obviously coming up very soon. I'm very excited for the cold. Uh, I, these are all watercolors. These watercolors here are on board and they're sprayed with a special fixative so they don't have to be under glass. And I do experiment with a lot of different surfaces and a lot of different ways to paint watercolors, but I just only use watercolors themselves. Um, I guess I could say also that some of these paintings are from Antarctica and some of these paintings, this is Alaska, and this is from Iceland. So it's kind of from all over the polar areas, including Boston. What's going on in this picture here? Sorry, what? What's going on in this picture? In the green one? Yeah. This is basalt lava from Iceland. Basalt lava forms these amazing columns. And Iceland, surprisingly, is much greener than you expect. One of the things that's really inspiring to me about all of these areas is that there's so much more color than people anticipate. For example, if you're talking about Antarctica, they think it's black, white from the penguins, and blue from the ice. And there's just so many more colors. Iceland, in this case, the basalt lava is covered with moss and lichen, and it even has some flowers. It, all sorts of stuff grows there. It doesn't grow very tall. You don't see you don't see tall trees. You don't see tall grasses. But there's definitely a lot of green in all of these places to be found. And I'm always really really excited by those things that kind of survive in these harsh climates. I'm always just really inspired by how they kind of just go against what you'd expect. I mean, obviously, they don't really care what we expect, but that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what this is, and so that's why I really like the green on it. And this one says, Help on the Shore. This is a print of bull kelp, which is a special type of kelp that grows very quickly. This is from Antarctica, although bull kelp is not um, only found in Antarctica. If you think about otters in kelp forests, that's bull kelp. But what's amazing about bull kelp, besides the fact that it's this beautiful green and yellow and red, again, colors you don't expect to find in Antarctica, is that it grows a foot a day. It has a very, very short growing season. So when you see it in Antarctica, and obviously only on the coast, it's like these huge noodles all over the place. And it's so beautiful. And so part of it is that I just love painting how beautiful it is. But it's also part of explaining how there's all these amazing things on our planet that you don't expect. And so I really enjoy bringing that forward. And I'll tell you about one mother painting because it's very different. Is this red one here. And that's actually a very new painting. That is polar ice on Mars. That's from a polar ice cap, and I talked to someone at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory who did the filters for that, because it's from a uh, satellite photo, and then the filters bring out the colors. The red is obviously the red of Mars, but just the fact that there are all these insanely intense colors on Mars, along with actual polar ice caps, is so exciting to me. And so I'm starting to do a couple of outer space ice Paintings. I'm working on something from Jupiter, or from the moon of Jupiter now, which is also weird because the ice is not water ice, it's methane ice. So it has crazy colors. And so that's really exciting. So all the stuff that you don't expect from ice and cold. Right? This is from Boston, the polar vortex in Boston. This was last January. And I would walk with my dog at lunchtime every day. And under my feet, there were these just amazing crystals that happened all the time in this 
sort of wooded area of Boston. So I take these photos and then kind of come back to them and try and recreate some of these crystal formations. Some of them are very spiky. In this case, it was really weird because they were very round. And you can see some of the water bubbles. It's exciting to paint ice that's so, so uh, fast. It's there. In the polar vortex, it stayed for a week or two compared to glaciers, which are 10,000 years old, or even more than that. And they have very different qualities. And I find them interesting to paint in all of the, their variations. You want me to turn it off? No, it's okay. Just one away. Now this one looks like this one is a series of mountains. This is a mountain from the high Arctic. It's in Norway, about 500 miles from the North Pole. And one of the things that was interesting during the time I was there was I was there right before it became totally dark. So in the month leading up to 24 hour darkness. And so there was no such thing as a high noon. It was always the sun's rising, the sun's setting. So if you can imagine how a sunrise and a sunset always has incredible colors, that, that was what it was like all the time. And because these mountains are snow co covered or ice covered, they reflect those colors. And so you get somewhat monochromatic and somewhat flat colors, but they're crazy colors. I get pinks mm -hmm. and oranges and yellows. When were you there? I got back from the high Arctic a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. I was on an artist residency with 26 other artists on a tall ship sailing off of the coast of Svalbard, which is part of Norway, an island way north of Norway, far above the Arctic Circle, about 500 miles from Norway. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to learn it. This one, this one's in the lab. 
father and doctor, he'd probably buy this to lay with me. The big arm. He had to lean on Dr. Balski. So we're at Mother Brook Arts and Community Center at 123 High Street in Dedham, Massachusetts. Uh, it's an old school building, built in 1921, uh, that was repurposed for an arts and community center about a year and a half ago. We have a long-term lease with the town of Dedham, to, and our, our mission is, is really economic development. It's the, the community revitalization through the arts. We have rented all of the artist studio space that we have available. We have, art, we have a wide variety of artists, sculptors, painters, photographers, musicians, uh, silversmiths, and um, we've also had a number of exhibits. We had two large exhibits, both of which drew very unexpected crowds. Uh, 350 people at our first exhibit called Flirt, and our second exhibit was a graffiti exhibition uh, which also grew similar crap. Our vision for the space is expansive. Uh, we sit on the Motherbrook, which is the oldest man-made canal in the United States. It was built in, it was actually hand dug in 1639. Uh, it, it connects the, the Charles River and the Neponset River uh, because the Charles River didn't flow quickly enough to power the mills, so it took advantage of uh, the differential. To, to power the textile and, and other mills in the area in the 1600s. Uh, it's never been developed in this spot because this spot has always been a school. There were two schools here before this 1921 building. Um, we also would like to have a, have a restaurant in the building. We are right now in the process of uh, going to town meeting to request uh, a liquor license. Uh, for, for a restaurant, we'd like a restaurant that we're talking to restaurateurs, uh, looking for something more like what you find at the Museum of Fine Arts or the Gardner or the Boston Public Library, something that really works well with the, with the art that we have here. And um, we also have an auditorium, which we're beginning to have. We have three theater companies who have, have uh, worked here. We also had a number of concerts and as we continue to renovate the building, uh, there will be you know, many more uses for that as we renovate both the inside and the outside. Uh, we expect to work on the grounds. We hope to have trails down to the waterfront, uh, benches, a sculpture park on the outside. Uh, so so I think I'm most excited about, about, I'm a sculpture myself, I'm very excited about doing a sculpture park and, and trails and, and a sitting area outside. I, I hope it's something that really uh, makes the community more inviting, more uh, more walkable. Uh, I think that, that it's just a tremendous asset that we have. Um, sculpture, I, I work in oil-based clay. Uh, I do a lot of figurative work, beginning to do some abstract work, but most of my, my work has been figurative and I, when I'm, I cast in bronze, I use a lost wax prep process. Um, in addition to, to uh, pieces that I sculpt, I do cast some natural pieces. I've uh, finally been successful in casting some bird's nests, 